Well, Stuart, investigators tell me this is a homicide case. They're still piecing together, but they know a 52 year old man is dead. At first, neighbors called police last week saying the man had jumped off of a fifth floor balcony, but now police say he was killed. 52 year old James Morenin was killed last week. Neighbors called 911 on December 14th, saying a man had jumped from a fifth floor balcony. From what witnesses were telling us, we thought it was a suicide, and that is what it appeared to be. But soon police discovered someone had fired a gun inside Morenin's apartment. Morenin was shot in the leg. Two suspects were arrested in Orlando on Monday. 21-year-old Mandy Jackson and 30-year-old Scott Love. You they appeared the before an Orange Mama County Mama judge Orange Tuesday morning. Seminole Both are charged Club with Club murder, Club fraud, Club and Club burglary. Club Police tell me they had some of the victim's belongings. Morenin was a manager at the Dollhouse, an adult entertainment club. Friends also tell me Morenin was an organ donor, so they're finding some peace in the fact that he was able to help some other people before he died. Now, the two suspects are still in an Orange County jail, but they'll be extradited here to Seminole County soon to face those charges. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Crime Circus. My name is Drip Drop. Tonight, I present to you episode number two and three within one YouTube video. This is from my three-part series featuring Mandy Jackson and Scott Love. A quick recap, Mandy and Scott were charged with robbery and murder, but almost nothing was taken from the apartment and the victim jumped off of his own balcony. Check out episode one in this series if you want to see Mandy and Scott's interrogations. Mandy didn't say much then, so let's see what she has to say for herself when she calls her mother a few days after being arrested, locked up in the county jail. Episode 3, also within this video, is a police interview with one of Mandy's co-workers, a fellow stripper from the strip club. And stay tuned for later this week when I release a brand new video here at Crime Circus. It's an exclusive. It's a video that you're not going to want to miss, I promise. And I don't break promises. Now let's see what Mandy has to say for herself. This is a prepaid collect call from an inmate at Seminole County Jail. This call is subject to recording and monitoring, and your location information may be collected and used by corrections and law enforcement personnel. You may start the conversation now. Hello? Hello? Hey. Hey. What's up? What's up with you? Nothing. We were starting to think that maybe you um, got yourself in a little bit of trouble seeing that we didn't hear from you yesterday. No, it's just kind of easier just to, I mean, I wasn't going to call today either. I was going to wait until New Year's Eve. Oh, okay. It's just kind of easier to get the days done without talking to anybody. It's depressing, so. Somewhat. I think I could agree with that. Yeah, stay here and talk to you guys and then, and then get off the phone. Do you guys get, let me, I, I have a question for you. Do you guys get like, um. Like, I think you told me you don't have access to a TV or a newspaper. No. Or nothing like that, do you? Newspaper. I was in the newspaper today. Um, today? Yep. I have it. Uh, we just got it. Oh, you did get the newspaper? Yeah, they give us the newspaper every day, but um, because it wasn't front page, I don't think they really noticed that my story was in it, because if they find out that my story's in it, they'll come in here and take it. Oh, uh, okay. So I'm ripping it out of the newspaper and putting it away in my paperwork. And that's on the Orlando Sentinel? Um, I think... Or no, yeah. it wouldn't be the Orlando... Is it the Orlando Sentinel? Yeah. Because yeah. I went online and read it because I got a phone call from the Orlando Sentinel yesterday, but I didn't answer the phone. What? And I won't either. What the fuck? But... No, because they, Mandy, they want to hear from the family of, you know, the person that did this. But. Yeah, well, no. Oh. Um, but, I mean, what it says, I mean, it's pretty damning. Yeah, but um, a lot of it's not true. It's just like the newspaper that they did up in Georgia. A lot of it wasn't true. It contradicts itself with the arrest record and... I don't know what the first one said because I didn't get to read the first one. 
Well, I mean, the big thing is is that they're speculating on stuff that they have absolutely no clue about. Unless there were cameras inside his apartment. Yeah, which there wasn't. Apparently. That's what I'm saying. Like, according to all the newspaper and stuff, there's only cameras outside. And see, that's... Well, no. The way they're making it sound is there was cameras all through that place. But I told the investigator, I said, I don't think there is cameras all the way through that place because I've been in this business a long time. And um, condos don't condos don't usually put cameras in the hallways. There wasn't any in the hallways. I'm telling right. You. They usually only have them on the outside of the doors. And, and in the garage. They got, a lot, they got a lot of stuff wrong, though. Yeah, I mean, I figured that much. I mean, because I was reading it, and I'm if like... I- None of this for just... one, if I would have, yeah, and, and it contradicts itself. If I would have walked away with $2,500, why would I go and swipe the card for $350? Yeah, we, that's what we all said, too. So that there's that much cash in there. Sense. Just... Yeah, there's no point. And then why would I go and ask that for $200 more? I didn't walk out with any cash. I didn't, it, it, it wasn't like robbery like that. That's not, it, that's not what it was. They put it out to be something that it, that it wasn't. Right. And then and then they're saying that um fatal fall but um like that they thought it was a suicide attempt. So then but then they don't say what they think it was. What do you mean? Like, they said they they don't they, they don't say that we threw him off. They don't say that No, he, they don't. They say he, he jumped. There's two that, there's two there's two witnesses that said he jumped. Exactly. Thank you. Because that's what fucking happened. And where does it say that at? Because it doesn't um, say that in the newspaper. Well, in the newspaper it's saying fall, but the investigator, um, the initial so news reports, the, the initial news oh, reports. Dude, you have no idea how much, how, how many chills like I just got because if there's not like there has to be somebody that witnessed that man jump because he jumped. There is some. There are people that witnessed it. There's two witnesses. I guess they were maintenance guys that worked for the the place. Holy crap, dude. That's like that's a really big relief because Well it is, but it you know, there's other factors in play, so I mean I I you know I don't want to go into it too much, but I mean there's just other factors in place. Why did he jump? You know, he was shot in the leg. He was shot in the leg, so, you know, was he threatened? The man was high as balls, mom. Well, I don't, I don't doubt that one single on bit. G, when you're on G, you're going to do anything. I said the man probably thought he could fly. Yeah. At that point, honest to God. Because they said that they thought it was a suicide attempt and until they found the bullet in his leg. I'm going to ask you this one question because I don't want to talk about it too much. Because you just know how I am. Was there anybody else in there besides you, James, and Scott? No. Well, it it might make you feel a little bit better, too, that Stephen's going to consult with a high-dollar attorney tomorrow. (gasps) No. To represent you. No, he's not. Jose Baez. Who is that? He's the one that defended Casey Anthony. (gasps) Oh, my God. Oh, my God, I'm going to cry. I'm really going to cry. Holy shit. So, let me also tell you again, just so you, like, know, don't trust anybody in there. I know. Don't talk about about your case to anybody. I know. I know, Mom. Everybody, anybody can be the police. I'm not stupid. Well, not even police. They can be snitches. CIs. That's what they call CIs. (sighs) 
So just, um, you know, until we, oh you know, God. get everything resolved and everything like that. You just so did like, they say how much it was going to cost? Well, it, it would be expensive because just the consultation is a lot of money. How much is the consultation? A thousand dollars. Holy shit, dude. And that's just for him to say whether he'll actually go down and actually even talk to you or anything like that about the case. I mean, uh, you, they supposedly appointed you a public defender. Has anybody called you yet? Or have you talked to anybody? Yeah, they did, but um, no. I did it just because I didn't know what was going to happen. Well, no, you have to. That's gonna, fine. Anybody was going to help me. That's fine. You need a public defender until another attorney takes over. Because we don't know for sure that he's going to do I'm that. But he is <laughs> no, you're not, Mandy. No, especially with witnesses and everything. Like I, it's not going to be something that I'm that I really. Think Mandy, what you don't understand is is that it can still be bad because you. It can, but it's not going to. You know, I, mom, don't don't fuck up my faith. Like my my faith in what I have. I know, but I don't. Please I don't do want not, to be because too. don't do the what if. No, let me believe that I'm going to be okay. Not okay in the sense that. Yeah, I'm going to walk out of here with nothing because I know that's not going to happen. But I'm praying that I'm not going to get, like, a a 15-year sentence or a 20-year sentence. Yeah, no, I don't want to go to prison for fucking eight years then if I get a 15-year sentence on eight years on good behavior. No. But if I have to go serve three years and they lower... And they lower uh, Shit, they give me six years and I wind up having to go serve three on the good behavior, I'm fine with that. Because I don't, honestly, I don't, I don't deserve to go to jail for fucking, for what they're saying that we did because we didn't. If there's witnesses that said that that man jumped, like that's, you have no idea how shocked, like I still am that, um, that he did what he did. Because we didn't do it. The man fucking jumped. And, like, the money shit that they said is, like, all wrong. Well, we're not denying that. There's a lot of stuff in the newspaper that it's not right. Right. And we agree with that. I mean, there's a lot of stuff in there that just is not, doesn't make sense. None of it makes sense, so. Holy shit. I can't believe I'm going to get, uh, I pray to God, even if it's not him, I hope Stephen gets me an attorney, dude. Well, I have no, I mean, I don't think he's going to, like, sit back. I don't think he's going to sit back and, and let you have a public defender. Because he knows, he, he just, he knows that guy. And he knows different things about that guy and you know and the sexual assault that he has and all all the charges that that man does and how many girls he drugs I don't think people know all that stuff Stephen does because he keeps texting me about some of it and it's like holy shit Mom. What? The man drugged my drink. Sandy, we, I don't have any doubt about that. We really don't. I have no doubt about that. And that's what's so because of what we're hearing. Fucked. That's what we're hearing. Try to keep me at his house. It's fucked up, dude. And I don't deserve to be sitting here. Well, there's um. That's why I wish that happened. Well, that'll come out. I mean, don't worry about it. I mean, if that's what happens, then that will come out. I mean, and you can whisper all you want. Your phone's recorded, so. <laughs> I'm talking about because people hear. Oh, okay. I don't care about the phone. Okay. Um, 
But, I mean, that's his history. I mean, everybody knows it. Even the investigator that I have working on your stuff said that that's what he does. That's his M.O. Yeah, he has new well, people that start there, new people, new girls start there. He does that. He takes them home, and he supposedly samples the goods. Yes, that's what that's what happens. So, and I didn't work there like that. The paper says that I worked there, like on the regular. Like, what do you mean you don't? You don't. That was the first night I worked there. Right. And they said that he left with me from the club. Video surveillance shows that he walked back inside. He was the one who walked me to my car. He made me stay after, after all the other girls left. I was there till like 3.30. The club closes at 2. He made me stay there until all the other girls were gone to walk me to my car. And he walked back inside. Okay. They're saying that he left the club with me. He did not leave the club with me. And if if you talk to Scott, please tell him not to fucking say anything. Yeah, he knows. Just no, Amanda, he's been he's been through this stuff but, before. No, but the thing about it is, is like he's kind of, like he's talking about when it comes down to it that you have one minute left that he's going to take it and he's going to take everything. They don't have enough to prosecute us like that to this extent. So he does not need to open his mouth about shit. He does not need to say that that it was him and just take it because they'll wind up charging him with the shit and that, that's not, he doesn't need to be charged with it because he didn't do it. And if you talk to him, can you tell him I said happy, like, or, or happy new year and happy early birthday? Because I don't know when I'm going to see him. When's his birthday? The 21st of January. Okay. <sighs> All right. Did you, send him, did you send him pictures? Um, yeah. No. Yeah, they went out today. So you okay. won't get them until after. And yeah. mine went out like two days ago, right? Yeah. I'm okay, just not now, sure so. how long it takes for them to get there. Thank, Thank you for using Love you. Love Goodbye. Love you. Record everything. Get your right statement for me. Uh, right there. Um, I really appreciate you coming in. Yeah, it was tough. Yeah, I know. It's like uh, it makes you have to set the facts. Yeah. But it helps. It definitely helps because I've been in denial since those on. Yeah. Like, no, it's just a cruel, really, really cruel joke. And he's going to pop out and be like, surprise, it was just kidding. And it's not going to happen. So that's a jacked up yeah. joke if it was. Yeah, I know, I know. It definitely isn't a joke. So that's sunk in already. Can you give your ID on you real quick? Yeah, thank you. Awesome. Well, this is my computer's moving now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the same video I showed you that night. And I only seen one. That and one. I got the chills when I seen that one. Mm -hmm. oh yeah. And I just heard that I was the only one who had her number. Make you were. So good. You were the only person who had and her it number. Was, it was just a moment of kindness that I had to get her number. Yeah. I think she was rude as, was it Keely? Uh, maybe Kiara? K-E-E-L-E. Kelly. Oh, the Kelly? She's a bartender? I think so, yeah. Okay. Yeah, she said she was pretty rude to her. Okay. Well, she was really, like, one of the other um, barback, Robert, said that the girl reminded him of um, the Chester cat from Alice in Wonderland. The Chester cat? Yeah, I don't know if I said it right. Yeah. But it was because she was so sweet, but something about her just kept pulling, luring you in, like something sneaky. Really? I was like, wow. And I didn't get that, you know. I'm I'm super sweet, so I was just talking to her to be nice. And, like, I even gave her one of my dresses. And she was like, I don't have the money. I was like, it's fine. You know, if you have it tomorrow, I'll give it to me tomorrow. And that that, nice that's when I got her number, just for that reason. And it was the end of the night, too. But really? it, it makes me feel so good. So, so good. Like, you were yeah. a big factor in finding. Yeah. I mean, right when I showed you that video, you are like, oh, gosh, that's definitely her. 
Matter of fact, I even got her phone number. <laughs> yeah. So, all right. Well, if you wouldn't mind just uh, filling the top part out for me here. Okay. Um, what we'll do is, is uh, we'll do kind of a recap of the night. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll, you'll start by saying, you know, we went and met with you on the 14th. Mm -hmm. Showed you a video and a picture, and mm -hmm. you immediately recognized the video as the yeah. girl. I mean, okay. immediately like, oh yeah. Then you showed me the phone number. I'm definitely gonna have ask for your assistance in this interview. I can write a book, and I know that's not. Okay. Yeah. Hey. Well, whatever you do, it don't matter. <laughs> I am um, years ago. I had a domestic violence case to an ex-boyfriend, mm -hmm. and uh, we had to do the same thing. And the 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 whoever was on the case was like, "Oh, girl, you wrote me a book." <laughs> and I was like, "I'm sorry, I'm just detailed." <laughs> so I'll definitely ask for the beginning part again with a start. Okay. Well, I'll just tell you now. Um, yeah. And correct me if, if I say anything wrong, so okay. I'll just do a quick recap. Okay. So the 14th is when Jim passed away. Okay. Um, we, we came down to the dollhouse. It's probably, what, 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. Met with you there, mm -hmm. several people. And uh, we, we were talking about um, what had happened. Mm -hmm. And I had showed you a video that we had from his apartment complex. And instantly recognized her. Yeah, I remember it was him and her, and he was walking. she was walking in, and she had a tattoo, and you're like, oh, I know her. I just talked to her last night. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then, you, and then you pretty much told me, oh, yeah, she gave me your phone number. And then you took that. Do you still have the phone number in, in your phone? I believe I still do. Awesome. I haven't touched it. And just, I, awesome. I, um, I have Snapchat, so mm -hmm. and you know how it syncs the contacts? Yeah. I had synced the contacts, and I seen her number pop up. It was a picture of the guy. Okay. Of the boyfriend oh, really? that was with her, and it really? just it gave me the word. And ever since then, I was like, I'm gonna leave the number alone. I'm not. I don't need to see that. Wow. <laughs> so I do still have the number. What was she saying to you that night? Whenever you were talking to her? Um, I'm I'm a flirt. Sure. And I like guys, but I like girls too. And sure. I thought she was super cute. She was petite. She had a red dress on. And the first conversation was in the girls' dressing room. She was changing her dress. She had a blue dress on. And I'm like, what happened to the red one? You look so nice. And um, she was like, Jen told me to change. So as soon as she told me that, Jim had came to the back and was like, go ahead, put that red one back on. It's better than the blue one. And then that was our uh, words of exchange then. And then that was it. At the end of the night, I went to change, and I had let her borrow a bottom. So she was like, here's your bottom. Thank you for letting me use it. And I was like, you're so welcome. Do you have more dresses? And that's how the conversation started. So um, I was like, I have a dress. I paid way more for it, but I'll give it to you for $20. She's like, I really don't have the $20, but you're going to be here tomorrow. I was like, I usually don't work on those days, but give me your number. That way we'll keep in touch. And she was like, okay. And then... Um, like, as soon as I had gotten her number, I was, like, packing up my stuff, and the floor guy, Gary, came in, and he was like, girls, come on, the meeting's going to start. And I packed, finished packing my stuff up. She was still trying to talk to me. I was like, I'll see you in the meeting room. In the meeting room, she um, asked the guy for the keys, for her car keys, and she couldn't tip them. So I took $4 out of my purse, and I took them, and he was like, thank you. But the whole night, that work? I don't I'm horrible with names. Okay. <laughs> but he was bald. Okay. He was collecting the keys for the girls that night. Okay. Um, but she seemed to be, like, stressing money the whole time. And even though I didn't really know much about her, I knew she didn't have more dresses. She didn't have much. She only had, like, a, you know those bags that you pull the tie and they come together? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. She had one of those with shoes and the red thing she was wearing, and that was it. Okay. Like, I know that was the first night I had seen her, met her, and knew anything of her. And all I knew was her name was Mandy, and I got her number. The night after, Gary and I, Gary and I were together, so we woke up to text messages saying, Jim's gone, Jim's dead. And mm -hmm. we're like, what? That was the quickest I had ever gotten dressed. And I got dressed, we got there, and I went to the back. One of the girls, Molly, had hugged me, and we didn't say nothing. But I had overheard Tori saying, uh, asking the house mom, Jerry, do you know anybody who got her number? Anybody at all? And I was like, I let the girl go so quick. I think I might have even been rude and, like, pushed her off. I was like, here, I don't know what's going on, but I have her number. And that just felt later on to find out that 
I had helped so much because I noticed right away you guys showed videos and you guys are like, all right, we're going to get ready to go. And you guys have been there since before. Yeah. It doesn't mean so much to me. Like, I'm so happy that I have the part I have. Like, it's oh, yeah. ironic and crazy. And it was critical. Very critical. Scary, but it feels good at the same time. Like, that girl could have came home with me. Yeah, I know. Did you she know? keep your dress? Yeah. Was it the black dress? It, no, it was a uh, baby blue with maroon and pink and white flowers. Okay. And it, it had um like sequins right here. Okay. But um she she kept the dress, you know, because I was expecting to see her. The next night, and, right? And okay. even though I don't usually work on those nights, I, I was considering coming in. Okay. But losing Jim, I wasn't considering okay. coming in that way. <laughs> I haven't worked since because it's been really hard. I would stay, because I'm with Gary, I would stay till, you know, late, like mm -hmm. 3 a.m., get home at 4, just waiting for Jim to clean up and make sure everything's good to close. So being there every day till, like, 3 a.m., and the thought of just hanging out and him not popping out of nowhere, like, I can't see myself going back yet. Okay. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> I don't know my new address by heart, but I know it's the same as Gary's. I know okay. I told you the same thing. Like Ronald Drake? Yeah. Yeah, I got that. All right, so I'm going to pull it up. This is But yeah, it was just so nerve-wracking, like, and the whole idea of, like, how, you know, I feel like Jim felt his last resort was try to make it to the next balcony because he felt like I'm going to die anyway. Like, it's so terrifying. I, I think I'm bullying. I think I'm with you on that. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't been living with Gary that long, so I still don't know my address okay. by heart. It's all right. No worries at all. Uh, Tori's bringing some more girls in tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. I haven't talked to anyone since. Like, I, I really, I haven't been able to. I've been an emotional mess. Like, I, I joke around and say I was a turtle, but I didn't leave the house the whole week after because I couldn't. Like, every, I think about all the good moments, but even the good moments, like, it's never going to be there again. So it brings me to tears even when I try to keep myself up so hard. This is like my second major friend loss. And what what excuse the French, but what fucks with me the most is that the night he was being taken from us, I was admiring him to Gary. I haven't been dancing for a year. It's only been ten, eleven months. That was my first Christmas dancing and I've gained so much respect from Jim and he respected me as a dancer, like it felt so good, and at the same time, he was being taken from us. So crazy. Jeff's case. It, it does. It and, and lets, the, lets people outside of you and I 
understand how much this helped. Mm -hmm. Well, this is how this is how Naisha got involved. Is it Naisha or Nisha? Nisha. This is how Nisha got involved in this case. Mm -hmm. So I'll give you a few minutes. I'm gonna make one more phone call or mask, and I'll be right back. No um, I, I think you're gonna be okay. okay. You're really nice hearing you. So you should be okay. awesome. give me like two three minutes. Not a problem. Thank that way you. I can like try and put it together. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> no problem.
That's all we have for you tonight at Crime Circus, folks. If you want to learn more about this case, you know how to do it by now. If you want to leave a comment down below, do that. Hit the thumbs up. Hit the thumbs down if you hate this video. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed. You don't want to miss the next video I'm releasing. 